Good morning students. I am Nilanjan Das Chakladar of Mechanical Engineering Department. Today we are going to learn a video lecture on Module 2, Lecture 1, Basics of Polymer in Composites. This is a part of the postgraduate course Fabrication and Processing of Advanced Composites, ME61011, taught in the Mechanical Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. So coming to the talk layout. So we'll learn the difference between thermoset and thermoplastic polymers, structure of thermoplastic polymers, degree of crystallinity and why it's important, mechanism of thermoplastic polymer, mechanism of thermoset polymers and summarize the whole content. Coming to thermoplastic versus thermoset polymers. So as the name says thermoplastic, that means it exhibits Plastic behavior when applied heat, that means when you apply heat, it softens, it melts, but remelting does not ensure the previous configuration. So it cannot go back to the previous configuration. What is the example? Polypropylene and polyether ether ketone. We'll look into it later how the polyether ether ketone looks like. And similarly for thermosets, so the word set is there that means it exhibits a set behavior when applied heat and cannot be undone that is very important so high heat may vaporize the material so common example epoxies polysters etc now some examples which will help you to quickly remember them say in case of thermoplastic we can correlate it with ice there's an analogy with ice why because it is reversible but it loses the shape so when you heat ice it melts but it cannot regain the same shape whereas in case of thermosets it is not reversible why because you imagine you have an egg and you boil the egg you cannot go in this direction now coming to structures of thermoset polymers so this we have already seen in the previous module it's polyethylene, polypropylene and the application is the food containers which we use every day. Now other thermoplastic polymers, so it's polyamide, we commonly know it by the name nylon, right? So what's nylon? These are nylon ropes, nylon fibers, so it's easy to remember. Now there are different variants of the polyamide, it, it is polyamide 6, Poly, polyamide 6,6, 6, polyamide 6,10, polyamide 11, polyamide 12. Now how are these numbers reached? So for polyamide 6, you see this CH2 has 5 carbon atoms and there is one carboxyl atom, carboxyl group. Then 6,6, 6, so here is the CH2 with 6 carbon atoms and between the carboxyl groups, so you have 4 plus 2, 6. So 6,6. 6. Similarly, what would be for this case? It's 6, 8 plus 2, that is 10. So 6, 10. 11, so CH2, there is 10, and the carboxyl is 1, so 11. CH2, it's 11, and the carboxyl is 1, 11 plus 1, 12, so polyamide 12. Typically, these two are very common, PA6 and PA12. So what we see here, the polyphenylene, sulfide we see polyether ether ketone so remember this structure this is important okay and what's the application of polyphenylene sulfide or pps so these casings and containers this covers inside the uh, car bonnet these are typically made of pps and for peak you see this this is a 3d printed nasal bone made of peak the thermoplastic polymer Now some other thermoplastic polymers, polyether imide, that is PEI. So do not confuse with this one, PAI, which is polyamide imide. Okay. Now polyether imide, what do you see? It is nothing but the mirror image up to this, then up to this. Okay. And then you have an additional benzyl ring. Similarly, this is PS, this is the sulfones then you have the polyamide imide now coming to degree of crystallinity do not confuse this with degree of cure now say for example in exam you come across this term 
this abbreviation DOC which is typically used for both degree of crystallinity and degree of cure. Read the question carefully and try to understand which has been asked for. So coming to degree of crystallinity, how much crystalline the polymer is. Now this is something very important. Whenever we think about the word crystalline crystals, we think okay so these are the crystals like the rubies, the emerald, the sapphires. But then what is crystalline? In case of solids, crystallines are ordered arrangement of the atoms. So if an ordered arrangement of the atoms are called crystalline in case of solids, then obviously if they are randomly arranged, it will be amorphous in case of solids. In case of polymers, the crystallinity, the crystalline polymer means they are ordered arrangement of polymeric chains. So what is the inverse of that? It's if it's randomly arranged polymeric chain, it's an amorphous polymer. Now coming to crystallinity and material properties. So we look into different material properties and what happens to the material properties as crystallinity increases or as the order increases. So first we see the high temperature performance increases, the creep increases, brittleness increases and stiffness increases. So what decreases? Obviously the toughness decreases. Okay. Now coming to crystallinity and crystal growth. So we not only talk about the, uh, the, uh, the crystallinity present in a polymer but whether with time with temperature this crystallinity changes or there is new crystal formation taking place. So crystal growth there is something called crystal growth rate and which is also called as crystallization rate and it typically shows two important temperature index. One the point where the melting takes place and far below that point is the glass transition temperature. Now this is a new term glass transition temperature denoted by Tg and this is Tm. So it's a transition that means some change of some change of states take place. If the name is glass transition that means there is a transition from glassy phase to a non-glassy phase which we typically find as rubbery phase. That transition is taken up by glass transition temperature. At this temperature this transition takes place. Okay. So crystallinity what do we find? The crystal growth increases, increases, it reaches a peak when most of the crystals have already formed and then because of the temperature is increasing again the crystallinity is lost and gradually it becomes amorphous. Okay. Now crystallinity and cooling rate, if we look in a particular example for peak. So what do we see? We see in the y axis we have crystallinity and in the x axis we have cooling rate. Now let us stop for a moment and try to think about solids. What happens in case of steel which we have already learnt in material science. So if we try to cool a, uh, a material, steel material faster we get say a brittle structure, a less tough structure such as martensitic when we rapidly cool the uh, rapidly cool the material. Similarly, here rapid cooling is also called as quenching. When we quench we get amorphous polymer. When we cool it slowly we get crystalline polymer. So anything in between will give a semi-crystalline. That means if up to this is my crystalline polymer, if this constitutes my amorphous polymer, then what would be here? The semi-crystalline. Now coming to mechanism of a thermoplastic polymer. A solid semi-crystalline polymer, when we heat, when, we, when I'm saying solid semi-crystalline polymer, I mean thermoplastic so don't forget that. So when I am heating it there is melt. First softens then melts. Melts of amorphous regions not the entire amorphous regions before the crystalline regions. This is very important. That is why exactly in the previous plot we have seen how the uh, 
crystal growth stopped and gradually it became it went close to the melting point so if an uh, thermoplastic polymer consists of some crystalline polymers and some amorphous polymers then after heat the amorphous polymers melts first once it has melt melted when we heat it further there is dislodgement of the crystalline so the dislodgement of the crystalline molecules begin only after melting of the amorphous part so what do we mean by dislodgement dislodgement means energize the molecules to move to a higher energy state that means you absorb energy to move to a higher energy level which is endothermic absorbing the energy and when you move to a lower energy state it is exothermic that means you release energy so plus q and minus q okay so again the same thing so within a pictorial uh, uh, representation so you it uh, it absorbs heat so it absorbs heat to go to a higher level so this is a uh, endothermic process similarly it releases heat when it comes to a lower energy level now these thing can happen infinite number of times in a thermoplastic polymer thing is theoretically it can happen infinite times not really not practically practically what happens after certain number of times there is degradation of properties the properties gradually reduce the material gradually degrades or weakens now thermoset polymer and cross linking so thermoset as we have already seen in the definition it shows a set behavior when heat is applied so in a thermoset resin as we apply heat so there is something called cross linking so the links they cross each other that is they form covalent bonds so if this was the initial configuration then it becomes cross linked okay like this and when it is cross linked it cannot move further the degree of freedom is reduced that's the process we call cure okay now three dimensional network comes down to a lower energy state hence it releases heat so it releases heat that means it is a endothermic or exothermic it releases it so it is an exothermic process okay since the three dimensional network are bound together by covalent bond they may not be melted after reheat that is a typical characteristic of thermoset polymer thermoset polymers so do not forget that recent researches have though proved that the covalent bond bonds can be broken and has importance in recycling of thermosets so still research is going on on recycling of thermoset uh, polymers so to summarize thermoplastic versus thermosets so thermoplastics long molecules with only secondary bonds allow remelting if regular in structure molecules may form crystals as the thermoplastic solidifies polymer becomes semi crystalline okay so we have seen both crystalline phase as well as amorphous phase in case of thermosets since covalent bonds cannot be broken they cannot be melted okay they are cross linked but they cannot be melted as the molecular arrangement is random in solid as well as liquid thermoset so they are amorphous so see the difference this is semi crystalline this is amorphous so overall how to remember it easily so for thermoplastic it is recyclable okay whereas for thermoset it is stronger and stable as well thank you for watching my video hope you have enjoyed it please add my pay playlist video lectures of fpac me61011 and subscribe to my channel do not forget to read the description below thank you